Ugh. Hi guys, so we've got our Kings of War hardback and I've been reading it since I got it. So how does our hardback book look? Well, Is it a good book? I'll, I'll tell you now, since um, the original Kings of War came out, when it was basically started off as a PDF, then we donned it like a wee A5 pamphlet uh -huh. book, and now we've got the official hardback that's got all the fluff and stuff in it as well. I'll tell you what guys, this is a brilliant step forward um, in Kings of War, mm -hmm. to the point where I've got Kings of War armies now. We, it's that simple, so. We like, see us here, a nice hardback book guys, for everybody out there yeah. as well, it's, consider making a game, a nice hardback book, even if it is still all downloadable and whatnot, people like a nice yeah. book. I like a nice hardback book, and I'm the guy that says I want the models in a plastic bag. You know? <laughs> that's it. Well, you I said, want well, a nice book. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll go through some of the, the yeah. new stuff that's in it. Um, we've got the, the fluff about the world, the world of Mantica, which of course Mantica. is a, a, Mantica, it's, it's a better, it's a step forward from the working title, which I understand was yeah. Ronnie Rentonian. <laughs> Rentonian. So, <laughs> but, 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 then, but then, maybe it should have moved on to Mortgageola. Um, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. The thing is that the, the, fluff, the fluff in the book is, is generally good. It's... Um, it's very high fantasy, so it's all big heroes, big so battles, big, big is, this, big that. It's all the usual um, fantasy things we would yeah, expect. Dragons yeah, well, flying about and knights on. There's, there's nothing is gonna is gonna stretch your your nah. your, your credulity too much. Um, you know, there's there's no huge political intrigue in here. There's no massive storyline that you need really need to, to get too Think involved in. Although I understand that Matt, you're going to be writing some. Um, some extra fluff uh, through books and stuff like that yeah. that, that will fl uh, flesh I, I out would, the universe. But it's got, it's got a nice, it gives you a nice setting behind it. But uh, the settings can be a bit generic sometimes, even down to the point where some of the uh, the regions and things are a bit open ended. You know, <laughs> I, I know that I, last time I spoke to Ronnie, um, I told him I wanted to have uh, snake men in it. And of course, there happens to be uh, <laughs> a place in it where there, there just could be some snake men in a video. Could, could there so, be some myogers floating about on the Oh, there, defi somewhere? There, there definitely is. There definitely is. Oh, ah, right. That's good. Um, I may get a use for my... Yeah, well, so we'll, we'll get on the rules part of the book. How, how does the... What are the basic outlines of the rules? Well, it's all, it's all D6 based. Uh -huh. um, you have a stat line where you have a rule to hit which is either your melee roll to hit or your ranged roll to hit. Is this just a set score? Set, set score. That's all right. Um, and you have a set defense as well, uh -huh. which guys have to roll over in order no. to wound you. Um, it's straightforward. The game, um, the crux of the game is movement based. Um, it's about getting lines of charge. It's about uh -huh. getting getting into the right position um, to defend your flanks, defend, and your, defend flanks. your rear and get, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it's all about. To um, win, you get round the other guy's flanks. Yeah, exactly. Or else you just um, charge in the front. Or you try and charge charge them in the front all the time, which is big berserkers, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the system itself is easy to pick up. The system is easy to use. Um, it's not gonna stretch you too much uh, to learn it. Um, every all all the the units themselves um, are all based off a sort of basic stat line, uh, which is then tweaked. To, to represent the basic units so and, and extra rules added who, here and there. Who do we have here? And I take it we have all the classic fantasy with our yeah, dwarves, all, with all, our the, all the stuff. Humans. Yeah. We have our elves. That's that's it. It's it's got it's got all all the standards um, of of fantasy in there, um, it, including some uh, of the extra stuff that uh, that's that Mantic have done really well, which we'll get onto whenever we we'll have a look at some of the forces. Um, but the additions in this book, if you already have Kings of War, um, maybe the download or you've already got the, the A5 uh -huh. book, um, the additions that you get in the rule book are Siege Warfare. Uh, there's an That's entire good. section um, of Siege Warfare written by Jake Thornton, which is really good. Um, it adds another layer to, to the game. So. Our Jake may have even written the old GW Siege Warfare. Uh, from he may, he may, well, he may, may well have. Gone. I remember it used to be more of an issue in what some of those. And now, yep. I like Siege Warfare because a lot of these battles, fantasy type battles, come down to if you watch, if you have read like Lord of the Rings, what not, seen the movies, a lot of them are based on sieges or based yep. on defending a strong well, position. The way the way the, sie the, way the siege works, um, you have an extra set of, of basically like siege points 
um, I don't think it's actually siege points you call them, but mm -hmm. you use the, use them where the defender can buy their fortifications with yeah. them, and the attacker gets to buy their things like their siege towers and their uh -huh. ladders and all these sorts of things, and that's over and above your um, your actual points for your armies. Um, it has a completely different dynamic from just your normal game because the suddenly all those little 10 units of 10 guys who weren't uh -huh. that useful before are now fantastic for carrying ladders up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> get, them to, get, them, get them to run forward and put those put those ladders up the wall. Bravely, um, bravely climb up that ladder. You, uh, yeah. for, is it the Forlorn Hope they used to call <laughs> forlorn it? Forlorn Hope. Forlorn Hope. That's exactly it. But there's, there's other, there's good fantasy parts in it as well. Like there's dwarven minefields and there's yeah. all sorts of extra little bits in there that really make it... Uh, Cool I fantasy always, sieges, you know. I always find you, it's still always painful being an attacker <laughs> against the defender in a siege. It's it really is. I say you, you want to buy lots of cheap units and give them ladders, and <laughs> throw them all forward. I always find the doors are the most personality in all these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. They, they always do. Um, the other than the magic. siege, there's magic artifacts. I read this, um, and the, I'll tell I'll tell you that this is the thing that really turned me on I, to playing Kings of War because I saw this and went, this is just breaks of cheese see, uh, see, I, I the stuff breaks of it as, so. as soon as i get my hands on this book i will be mining the magic <laughs> section it, it. and co cross referencing it with each of the armies to go which piece of magic kit will well, most make my ridiculous unit totally spectacular quite 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 frankly it's the jar of the four winds <laughs> is the one you want um the way the way the magic items work is you can only take one of each of them the sort of the unique magic items mm. uh the jar of the four winds adds 12 inches of range onto your uh range guys so all those rifles are now i think 36 inch range yeah. rather than 24. yeah i'll have that all across the board <laughs> uh, well <laughs> great for that for that for, well, for that for that 40 big 40 yeah. unit of 40 uh rifleman yeah um, no, they have 36 inch, yeah, 36 inch range on them. That's right. great. Means you they just don't hide have, right yeah. the back of the board. Means you don't lose you don't lose any uh, rounds or you don't lose any rounds of shooting trying to move. Yeah. So, um, but you know, there's other stuff in it. Again, the, it allows you to add various rules to uh, to the game uh, to, to your units that they, they wouldn't or, or otherwise have. Scenarios for the games are all as standard as they are in the Kings of War book, which is uh, basically there's kill and pillage, and then the third. A iteration is kill and pillage. I know pillage. Um, <laughs> no, pillage. No, nothing beats a bit of pillage. Yeah, it, to, to anybody out there who's who's used to playing these sorts of games, what you're talking about is basically uh, kill points, yeah. and then hold objectives, and then kill points and objectives. Yeah, <laughs> so it's basically but pillage um, sounds so much better yeah. than, than objectives. Well, that's it. Um, all the all your rules for terrain all in here, as you can see in the book. Um, you know, it's it it really is a step up. In, uh, in quality from uh, from the A5 book, it's really good. Yeah. There's some there's pictures on nearly every page, and there's lots of good reading in it. And again, as I keep I know I keep saying it, but it's really not going to stretch you. It's great. It's not. It, it was fun reading. It, it wasn't yeah. sitting trying to grind your way through rules to find out what so, was going on here. Some some other guys get carried away a bit with their yeah. rule books. Where yeah. this this is just straightforward. It's, it's it's what I like to call idiot proof. It's it, and it's yeah. and, and fun. That's the the whole point. Yeah. In it is is great fun. Um, any, if you guys don't know how the, the actual uh, setup of your models goes, you get uh, what's basically like a movement tray or a base of a model. That you don't have to take guys off. You don't have to keep adding Which them on. Which is really handy, not taking yeah. guys off, because how often, especially when you're playing fantasy, you're taking off one guy and another guy and another guy, yeah. and it becomes, you know, the front guys get nicely painted and the back guys, they're going to be shunted on and off and on and <laughs> off it. your base. I like That's this it. fact that you just have a base yeah and everybody stays in that base all the time it it also helps for movement and judging distances and whatnot but that guys it. aren't and there's, and there's, there's none of this having to change formations or anything like that it's no. all just rack up more and more these, blocks of guys until they get the basically the fluff will go these guys are drilled they stay in a big 20 yeah. man block and they be a square and that's, that's it, it. There, there's a uh, there's some campaign uh, rules in here as well. Um, they're not complicated either. They're just stringing together some battles and having rewards after each battle yeah. to, to add more stuff to your uh, to your army. Uh, but then we get to the forces. One of the criticisms I do have of the book is that while we get a lot of nice new rules like sieges mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff, there are there's no new stuff for the forces. Um, the forces in the book are the ones you'll already find online. Um, so none of the new stuff that you might have seen um, advertised made it, made it into the book, but I'm assured that they're coming out in the, the next expansion. Um, saying that, a lot of the um, little units and things have had some tweaks done to them. Um, one of the examples was for the dwarves, um, bulwarkers 
who are dwarves with spears Spears. are particularly good. I have um, never seen a downside to having a spear. Not in this game, anyway. <laughs> this game, it's, it's always an advantage yeah. to have a spear. Especially um, you're a dwarf. Yeah, well, yeah. Dwarves, dwarves with spears. Um, previously, on the, the PDF versions, uh -huh. they were the same price as the guys with uh, with axes. Yeah. Which meant you just got loads of, loads of the guys with spears, because spears were better. But now they've, they've increased slightly in price. <laughs> so, uh, the so, balance yeah, so, so that, that cheesy hole's been, been closed for me, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but still spears guys spears all, spears all across the board um, so we've got the dwarves um, the dwarf uh, cannon spam army is still really yeah, good it's, <laughs> it's, really it's, good. it's one of the first things I whenever we start chatting with this this morning I was like how many cannons can a dwarf have how <laughs> many cannons yeah um, it, it will we'll, at some point we'll, we'll do some uh, we'll do some lists for, for kings of war but one of the uh, one of the really good armies is to have dwarves with lots of cannons. I can just um, see a, a little circle of cannons on the hill surrounded by dwarves with spears but, all the way. Yeah, the actually, you, you've, you've pretty much got the build <laughs> <laughs> already in your head. Yeah. Because um, the guys with spears are great at uh, receiving charges. So, you know, you just cavalry try to charge them to get penalties yeah. to hit and stuff. Uh, where the cannons can sit either in a hill or, or somewhere else and just shoot and... The dwarves get a, a hero that makes those cannons elite, which to all intents and purposes makes those cannons twin linked. So you you, you, you roll the hit, and if you miss, you, you get re roll it. I love so, that. Yeah. I'm like, and I, I can uh, see lots of cannons. That's about. it. Um, we've got the elves, of course. Um, the elves are all uh, pretty. The, the best thing about the elves, of course, is that they're, they've got a better chance to hit with their ranged weapons. Um, arguably, the old sea guard are probably the best yeah. because they, they do both jobs of having. Spears and bows. As, so. If you can do both jobs reasonably well, you know, rather than just doing one job, then there's always an advantage in that. There is, you know, yep. if you can hand it out both sides. That's you know. it. Their artillery are pretty good as well. The bolt throwers are quite good. Yeah. Um, again, because they're elite, get some rerolls and things. Just dragons, is it? Uh, yeah, there's dragons in the book. Uh, the old elf lord on his battle dragon. Yep. Is I, is I like these good. dragons. I've seen these dragons. And they're of a nice scale. They're not that ridiculously big dragon yeah. that you get in some of these games. Then we get on to, of course, the Kings of Men, or Kingdoms of Men. Uh, that's. I believe this is your. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid, afraid you so. Spotted cheese. And they spotted some cheese in the uh, Kingdoms of Men. The Kingdoms of Men. Foot Guard. Foot Guard are really good. <laughs> they are 10, 10 Foot Guard. Um, we, were, we were working out with a. With, the aid of a little bit of mathematics, yeah. that basically they can take a massive amount of punishment, just 10 of them. <laughs> so um, without... And, and it's only 10 guys if they eventually do get killed. So yep. they can soak um, up a lot for your one, stuff. One of the, um, the ways you build your army in Kings of War is that in order to include artillery and heroes and monsters, you need to have uh, solid units of troops first, which are basically units of 20 uh, infantry. Um, 20 infantry or 10 cavalry or slightly smaller amounts if they're large infantry uh -huh. or large cavalry. Um, all across the board, that means that you, you want to have at least 20 um, guys, even mm -hmm. in a small sized, sized army. Um, that's another point actually that I really should raise with Kings of War. Kings of War scales up really well from small games right the way up to, uh, to, to large games. Uh, I've been playing at the moment 750 points um, worth, basically because a lot of the guys around don't have a huge amount of, uh, of uh, fantasy figures to play yeah. Kings of War, um, and at 750 points it works equally as well as it does at 2,000 points. Um, basically, uh, as you start going up in points, your units increase in size. Yeah. Um, you get more of them. You know, it's 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 very simple. And when each of your bases are made up, really. Uh, 10 infantry and then just make another unit of uh -huh. 10 infantry and you add those, add those two you, and add you those, stick add them those together two. you could even build like 10 by 10 and magnetize them so you can make your you can, 10 or you 20 can, you can you the, know. the way the way i've been doing it though is i've i've just been putting uh buying the uh bases you know like the mdf cutout bases plugging all the guys into it and going there's a unit of 10 uh -huh. i'll make another unit of 10 if i want a unit of 20 i'll put them both together yeah that's, that's your the, block of 20 that's, that's your block of 20. um and it works really well. So, you know, the actual starter armies, things that you get from Mantic, um, you can play games with those. Um, 
you'll want to increase them. Yeah. <laughs> Quite frankly, you will, because uh, at, at some point you'll want to start getting artillery and and, uh, and heroes and all into the, the army. But you can you can play. Uh, quite happily, little games with the with the starter yeah. set for whatever, wherever much it is. I so. just buy twenty cannons. <laughs> well, well, again, that's your limitation. <laughs> is that you have to have twenty guys before you can have a cannon. Um, yeah. Although you could argue, of course, you know there are ogres and things in there that uh, that you can use. My ogres may get back. Up. My my Warhammer Fantasy Battles ogres got out on their tray about three years ago for a tournament, and they're still sitting in that tray. My wife keeps asking, <laughs> keeps asking, "Where did my tray go?" Well, they're in a drawer in the office here well, somewhere. Well, kings, kings of War now, you, yeah. can, you can re no. recycle. Um, again, that's that's another point. Hidden in amongst these army lists uh -huh. are the, the, is the potential to, to do other armies. Um, the Kingdoms of Men have two units of ogres yeah. that you can basically make an army with if you want oh, by just right. having the melee units of ogres mm -hmm. and the ranged guys. And there's a, an ogre commander as well that uh -huh. you, can you can take, an ogre hero. That would do. Um, yeah, we, we just we just skipped over the abyssal dwarves there. Who are basically your evil dwarves. Evil dwarves. Evil dwarves that have lots of nice artillery. Ah, yes. I remember looking at one of the little characters. who yep. looked really well. Yep. Um, the goblins, the goblin, the goblins look really good. Nice big hook nosed goblins. Um, arguably, they're not brilliant <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to <laughs> goblin. When well, goblins comes to fight, never they're class right. to be brilliant. No. Hordes and hordes, huge yeah, numbers. Loads, loads and loads, loads and loads of goblins. Goblin build. Yeah, you know. lo loads of goblins. Um, I, I've yet to sit and, and mine the goblin list to see what's, yeah. what's particularly good be. with them. Guys, sometimes it, with all these books, it takes a while and you look and you look and then you go, well, if yeah. I did that and over and over and I took that bit of magic, all oh, of a sudden it. this becomes so much more worth its points. Uh -huh. if, if, then there's the orcs, of course. Uh, orcs, buy yourself fight wagons. Fight wagons are great. <laughs> <laughs> lots of fight You've wagons. You've been told, guys. Yeah, lots of fight wagons. Um, um, again, there's the then the orcs. There's the twilight kin, who of course are the evil elves. Um, they uh, are, are pretty much the same, the same as elves. They just have different uh, different abilities. There's lots of uh, assassins and things like that. They've oh. also they've also got access to, to demons, who are their uh, demons. Yes, yeah. I like demons. Or well, abyssals. But demons are the the abyssals are your cheesy units. Yeah. Um, you can make a whole unit of them, a whole army of them as well. There's gargoyles who can fly. Um, who really, if you're playing siege rules, <laughs> <laughs> they, gargoyles they get, uh, and dragons, I suppose. Uh, yeah, that's uh, it. Um, when, when you have when you have a unit of guys that can fly and just basically jump over the walls, yeah, then, uh, your walls you know, are a bit pointless. That's, that's it. Um, and they all regenerate as well, which is pretty cool. That's handy. Um, yeah, and all your uh, your your main guys, the undead, the undead are good as well. Actually, the yeah. undead, the undead have have some great. Um, hard, hard to beat. Rules. I love an army with uh, just have tons of skeletons marching across yep. the board. You just saw them about tons of skeletons, right well, away. What what the the undead of course have the the advantage of having loads of cheap troops. Yeah, and then expensive heroes. So you've got your big vampire lords and uh -huh. all that sort of thing, and you know giant tons giant of skeletons, liches, and uh, yeah, more off the faceless. Um, <laughs> you know, so you know. Across the board, it's it's exciting. It's it's really cool. It's an easy fantasy game to get into, uh, and not only that, we've got advice at the back for for running tournaments. Did I see something in there about models? And there um, is there, the important is the important line uh, for miniatures. Players are permitted to use non magic miniatures in their armies. For that's it, guys. So if you have ancient armies out there, you want to convert. You have other fantasy armies out there you want to use. It's all there. You can just pick them up. And use them. My ogres now yep. have a home. <laughs> That's it. The ogres yeah. have a home now. Even the nobblers may be left out, but nobody likes nobblers. So <laughs> no, but that um, doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, um, actually, that that is that is one of the, one of the other complaints I have about the tournaments. What? The tournaments, um, you can only have um, armies made up of one army list. So in yeah. effect, if you're making your ogres, you can't include goblins in it because you're not allowed to have allied yeah. units. Although if you're playing friendly, you can have as many yeah. allies as you want. It actually states that right. in the rules. I could have my goblin nobblers in there. Yeah, but for tournaments, you can't. Ah, well. Ronnie, change that rule. Change that. Change <laughs> allow, that. Allow, allow, want, allow some allies in the into your tournaments. I, I just want ogres and dwarf cannons. Dwarf cannons, that's it. it should be fine. Everything should be fine. At that everything, point. After that there, everything's fine. That's it. So there you go, guys. Hardback Kings of War. Um, if you get a chance to buy it, um, certainly have, give it a look. It is really good. Um, I have been more than impressed with it. Um, it's nice, it's plush, it's got plenty of pictures in it. It's not hard reading, it's not hard going at all. And it's it's a fun game with 
big units of guys. So we'll get on, we'll do some more reviews for you and drop some comments below and tell us what you think of Kings of War.